You said you had a question about evolution. Oh yeah, yeah. What, well, yeah. How do you reconcile that? You know, because the narrative of the of, of the scriptures really, it's not yeah. just the Christianity. It contradicts the theory of evolution that you know science yeah. opposes. I, I agree with you. It contradicts it. Yeah. So the Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and He did so in six days. Yeah. The seventh day God rested. You can't have evolution because again, death comes as a result of sin. You can't have things dying before sin came into the world. So you can't have millions and millions of years of things dying and then kind of over time evolving into something more and more and more. When the Bible says God created man on sixth day and he created land animals on sixth day. So, I mean, it would contradict the Bible. And, and again, it just doesn't fit. And I don't think if you, I'm not an expert scientist. I mean, I read things, I look at things. But if you look at carbon dating, Carbon dating does not test for millions of years. It can't. It's only up to like maybe 140 to 160,000 years that it can it can be verifiable, if that, right? So it doesn't go millions of years. So carbon dating can never be used to justify it's been millions and millions of years old. So I think a lot of these uh, museums and stuff have great, great things to look at. But when they say this dinosaur is millions and millions of years old, I'm like, yeah, no, I don't believe so. Because the Bible says that God brought all the animals two by two, except for the clean animals, it was seven, onto the Ark of Noah. Now, were there dinosaurs on there? I think so, but I think they were probably babies, you know. And honestly, honestly, dinosaurs, just like any reptile, if you was to take a turtle right now and you put a turtle in a big atmosphere or thing, it will continue to grow. Reptiles grow, right? But if you put them in a smaller enclosement, they don't grow. They grow, grow in according to their thing. So if you're living hundreds and hundreds of years, you're going to grow. You know, but I don't believe it fits. I, ah, don't tell me it's going to rain. I, don't feel like I felt rain. a spot, a drop. It might be. It's supposed to be later. Yeah, there's more. Hopefully it passes by. Hopefully. I think it was supposed to rain around three, I thought. Yeah. But yeah, what do you, you, what do you think about evolution? You know, um. Does that, does that fit with the Quran? I mean, how would it fit with the Quran? So honestly, it's not something I've got into yet. But obviously, you know, I first and foremost, you know, I'm a believer in the divinity of the Quran. And, you know, I... And so whenever there's a conflict between my reason and my belief, or my reason and uh, the divinity of the Quran, I prioritize the divinity, you know? Uh -huh. So even though evolution does contradict it, you know, I still prioritize and preserve my, that belief. But I haven't looked into I haven't looked into the arguments. But I do feel if we're like if the scriptural faiths are gonna have any you know stand really against the theory of evolution, you know we have to find scientific arguments against it, and we can't just argue against it on the basis of our beliefs, you know. Because well, well, I, I think everybody does though, because everybody has presuppositions. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Everybody has presuppositions. So there are Christian scientists. Uh -huh. uh, I know of a Christian scientist who's an astrophysicist, right? I mean, the, the guy is very intelligent, and he does work with creation stuff. Everybody has the same evidence, but their presuppositions oh. view how they interpret the evidence. Okay. So that's why you can have a Christian science scientist look at the very same things mm -hmm. that a, an evolutionary scientist looks at and have different conclusions because of their worldview. But we're saying as Christians that our worldview is consistent, right? As, as those who believe in God, right? That our, our, uh, our worldview is consistent because it's a God who's created this worldview. That's why like when I use this and I use the law of logic, it's a law of non-contradiction. It doesn't change. Without a God who is unchanging, how could we test anything in science if everything's always changing and nothing's consistent? You wouldn't have the laws of physics, the laws of all these things that, how do you test these hypotheses? How do you, how do you look at these, these, like even the scientific method? It has to be testable, or it has to be observable, testable, and repeatable. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with evolution. We've never done that with evolution. We've never seen one species go to another species. We see adaptation, which we, we believe that that doesn't contradict the scripture. You know, a, a bird adapts to its environment. You know, bears adapt to their environment. So there's adaptation, but a bear still is a bear. You know, a, a, a bird is still a bird. That was even Darwin's dilemma. This finch, they've adapted to their culture, but they were still a finch. You know what I mean? So, and actually the theory of evolution is a very racist theory. Darwin was, because he, in his book, the full title of it, he said that the black races were not as evolved. 
as everyone else. Because, you know, it's white middle America, or not America, in England, these white scholarly people, they think they're more evolved than everybody else. They have not evolved as we have, right? So it's a very racist, racist position, you know? And it's survival of the fittest. So with evolution, why does anything, why, does, why, why do we care about morality? Why do we care if somebody kills somebody else? If they're the sur sur strongest, survival of the fittest, right? There's no, there's no justification or basis for morality, which we can stand upon because we have the Word of God that says it's wrong to steal, it's wrong to lie, it's wrong to murder another person, it's wrong to covet, it's wrong to commit adultery, it's wrong to commit idolatry. We can look and say the, the Bible tells us these things, plus they're written upon our heart, we already know it. We already know the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments is written on our hearts. We know it's wrong to steal, lie, no matter where you go, they know it's wrong, right? And so evolution can't account for that. And just thinking logically, this is a question that I'd really love to have an evolutionist answer for me. Maybe they do have an answer. I just can't see it. We raised some chickens at, home, at my house. Yeah. Well, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Like, you know, and, like, and then how does a, an individual evolve? What comes first, his kidney, his heart, his lung? How does that evolve over time? If, if, if we were just to pull your kidney out, it wouldn't survive. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've like, had that doubt too. You know, the anatomy yeah. of the human being is just yeah, so it's, amazing. It's, it is. Imagine that this kind of yep. came out of happenstance without yep. an intelligent creator. Yep. Even the eye, they say that the eye is so no, complex, no, it's greater than any yes. camera that we can develop. Know, yeah. You're telling me that just that evolved by random chance? We're just stardust bumping into stardust, chemically create this it amazing, is. you know, body of, not that my body's amazing, I'm just saying like this, this the complexity of, of humans being created like that just evolved over you know as a random chemical reaction just happen chance yeah that's 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 silly to me you yeah, know even when i was taking biology classes it seemed like so many parts of the human body were specifically designed for you know human yeah. purposes like how the eye focuses so that we can read like words off of a page yeah you know if the retina couldn't change its shape you know, yeah like, we wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Or how there's this liquid in the ear that, you know, uh, moves around whenever, like, we're facing another direction or turned upwards. So Is that, that we... for balance? Yeah. Oh, yeah. see? I didn't even know and that. there's this yeah. liquid in the ear that, you know, yeah. it shifts around so yeah. that we can reorient ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's just, like, crazy to see yeah, all that yeah. came out of Yeah, light. but because of the presupposition mm -hmm. and those that hate God, they'd rather say we've, we've evolved from some common ancestor, you know, than to give glory to the God who's created them. And that's what the scriptures tell us. People will rebel against God, you know. Um, and, and I always say that when people do good things that do not believe in God, they're doing so as a testament against themselves, as a witness against themselves that God has written upon their hearts because God's given us a conscience. Con meaning with, science meaning knowledge. We are with knowledge about the things that God has put in our hearts. Now, he's given us general revelation. We can look around at all of the things that he's created and see the handiwork of God. But the special revelation is what we need to come to faith in God, and I would say that's in the Word of God, the Scriptures. Yeah, we both have that, you know, trust for God and inherent distrust for any human construct, like theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. I think that's it, you know. Do you agree? Yeah, I would say that. I, I think we, I think it's very important mm -hmm. to discern whether or not Jesus is God, yeah. because that's a very yeah, serious. There, yeah, that's a very serious. Yeah. Like the the logical outcome of that, mm -hmm. it's heaven or hell. You know, I don't know if, if Islam believes in hell, if this is eternal, or if it's just like, the, okay, so. It's not eternal for everyone. Okay. But that's that's at stake, you know what I mean? So, in, in my belief, which I believe is the truth, uh, those who reject Christ, they will find themselves in the eternal lake of fire, right? Um, because we're, we're, we're despising the grace of God who sent his son to die. To save sinners from their sins and we're saying no i'm just going to worship you as a or i'm not going to worship you i'm just going to call you a prophet but he's not just a prophet he's the high priest high he's a prophet priest and king he is god in the flesh he's the greatest of all uh, uh um you know and the only way that man could be saved now, i know you may disagree but uh, but i would say you have to that's where you'd have to really look i would say of, of all the things within christianity that you may disagree with that's the most important who is Jesus? And I would I would look at all the the, re, the the things you could find on what the scriptures teach about Jesus, and 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 look at that because if you get that wrong, like I said, you will spend eternity in hell. And I don't say that to scare people. That's just that's what the Bible says. The reality, yeah. you know. Um, 
you can't deny it's just like even if somebody believed if the, in Islam if you believed if I didn't convert to Islam that I would be going to hell and you didn't try to convert me I'd say well you don't really love the people that you're not you know you don't really believe what you're saying then or you do believe it you just don't care about those other people you know what I mean um, and so that's why we share the gospel with people because we believe it because it's true and we also care about where other people are going to spend eternity and we want them to be saved so, so that's why we do it I definitely agree with that. You know, it's important that, you know, anyone, whoever he is, you know, be consistent with belief, his belief. Yeah. You know, and isn't a hypocrite. It just, right. you know, shapes it to whatever, what's popular. Right. Yep. But, um, I also had another question. So, have you ever given thought to the, how the Prophet, you know, Muhammad Sallallahu was able to include, you know, the scriptural, because there's a lot of the scripture, the stories of the prophets, you know, they're very similar. And the prophet, and the Bible, and the Quran, like the Quran talks about Moses, Jesus, Jacob, you know, all those prophets. So, have you ever given thought on how Muhammad was able to put those stories in the? the Quran? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I've done some research on that. Um, it's been a while, so I, I don't remember all the sources. Uh, I know I have a book on it that's, that goes through different world religions, but. From my understanding, Muhammad was not in direct uh, connection with the what we would consider true Christians, but with Gnostic Christians or with those of kind of Roman Catholicism or leading towards that way, right? And so he would have got some understanding of those things from them. They were people that were influential, we believe, in his... And, and I'd have to look again for those sources because it's been a long time, but... In that area, he would have come across people that were professing to be Christians, but not those that he wouldn't. I don't think he would have had the scripture. He would have had people that were telling him things from that. You see what I'm saying? So it conveyed. So that's how I believe. And honestly, me being honest with you, I do believe that it was an angel of light that came to Muhammad. Really? Because even who was his first? Who was the wife that warned him that that? I think that's a demon. Fadiza. Okay, so. Well, she didn't warn him. It was a demon. Well, I. From, from our accounts of reading things that I've read on it, that there were that there was a warning that that could be a demon from you. But then he came back and said no, and she's like, okay, it's not a demon. It must not be a demon. Well, so what but do you what do you think? That I, I do believe that an angel of light came to him and gave him false information. I believe that the devil or a demon of, of, of Satan came, just like I believe that the same thing happened with Joseph Smith. That somebody came to give him a false understanding. You think an angel came to Joseph Smith? Not, not a genuine angel, an angel of light, meaning someone who is impersonating an angel to come and say on behalf of God, okay. saying they are God. Because Joseph Smith had like seven or different accounts. It was an angel, and it was God himself, it was God and the Son. Like, come on, let's be consistent here. You're all over the place, right? And I do believe the same thing was with, with Muhammad. Um, and even Malcolm X, uh, who you familiar with Malcolm X? He converted to Islam. Well, from my understanding, when he was in prison, he had an angel come to him and reveal to him that go to Islam, this is the, the true, the nation of Islam, this is the true true path. And so I do believe that, that Satan, I don't think that there's a demon in under every bush, but I think that the, the Bible tells us that we are not at war with flesh, but the principalities around us. You know, it's a spiritual realm that takes place. And I do believe that Satan does work to try to deceive people. That's why there's so many religions in the world. But I said, the reality is there's only two. There's, man has to do stuff to earn, to earn salvation or to earn that, that righteousness or to earn that, that eternal life. And then there's biblical Christianity that says, no, you can't earn it. You can't. You can't even believe on your own. God has to change your heart and bring you to that belief. And so that's why I say there's really only one, there's only one true religion that deals with man's sin. Christ died on the cross for man's sin. And he's the only one that can save.